Good morning. Man alive. I'm so happy to see everybody. Brother. Man. There's a pot of coffee on downstairs. Those of you that are still a little bit sleepy, please help yourself. We'll make more. Happy Sunday. I want to start out saying this. Hope begins with you and me. And don't ever believe otherwise. We live in a hope-starved day and age, and God has entrusted us, anointed us, to be the harbingers of hope and the delivery system of hope to the suffering near or far. The Bible says many are called, few are chosen. Why? Because some are no-shows. They don't have it in their hearts to bring hope to the world. That isn't an option with us, is it? Amen. A couple of things that we'll begin with. and Shirley Risser is back in, in uh, the hospital at Essentia in uh, uh, Fargo. She is... Hmm, various things that they're trying to get under control with her and and uh, they've maybe done they feel like they've done all that they can in some regards so uh, but we don't give up hope and uh, uh, we want to be lifting her up and I'm gonna somehow get there and, and visit and let her know she's not forgotten it's pretty important to let people know they're not forgotten and uh, uh, very important actually so uh, I'll be doing that, and I hope you'll be praying for her, and we'll pray for her today. Um, Amy Lou wanted to be here today. She was uh, looked forward to it again yesterday and, and uh, is just not able to. She can barely walk. I help her with a bath, you know, so that tells you everything you need to know. Um, it's, uh, so, so there's that, but uh, she's pretty saddened that she couldn't again, could not get here. She wants to be here to encourage <laughs> to, to encourage everybody else and, uh, and just to be at church. And um, I want to pray for David. David is a um, brother to my friend and brother that I work with here and uh, um, passed away and suddenly, and uh, they had a service for him already um, this last week. So uh, let's start out with a prayer for David and his family. Lord, we, it's always so hard, Lord, when they, a loved one just, just drops, and, and that's that. We don't have a chance to tell them, you know, how special they are and precious they are and that we love them and, and comfort them in any way that, that you would bring our hearts to say, Lord. And uh, so I comfort the, I ask you for comfort for the family, for the entire family to, as they hold on loosely now to, to him, but can hold on and embrace the memories of, of a friendship, a brother, a husband, a friend, an uncle. We thank you, Lord, for his life and for what I know of him, and uh, that is uh, to know his brother. And uh, I thank you. I'm, I'm, ex I'm suspecting he was a hard worker and a conscientious and kind man. So we thank you, Lord, that you bless that family. For Shirley, Lord, uh, sweet Shirley, she, she uh, endured the loss of a husband and, and uh, uh, sons who lived far away and some daughters that lived far away from her. And uh, uh, now we're grateful that she has her, her daughter-in-law, uh, our sister, Kim, to look after her and uh, has been looking after her for many months and, and uh, loving son, Clayton. So... We thank you for them and, and just ask you to fan into flame that, that faith that surpasses all understanding and that brings hope and healing to each person, Lord. And we thank you for that. Be glorified in what we say and do, Lord. We ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, Vicki is away, so, so we can act up. Yeah, do as we darn well please here and just lie about it when she gets back. What? You're going to take their word for it? Yeah. yeah. 
anyway. You must have a song or two in mind. 390. We have singers here. Good, Anybody yes, that's song? awesome. Help with song? 390. 390, song number 390. And although I'm good with math, my memory doesn't serve me, so I never know what we're turning to. There's 391. Give him a hand, folks. Oh, my goodness gracious. You know, I, I guess it's, uh, well, you hang on to that for a minute. She might come up with another one, you know. Um, I, I'm not happy about being the, having the reputation of being the first person to let her be on a bar stool. <laughs> I'm assuming that her parents would never. Um, <coughs> and I found a little something. You sing good. You can just put, hold that up. Okay. Tell them they sing good. Maybe they'll sing more. You sing good? 346. <laughs> We're going to do song 346. <laughs>
rest assured one's control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. well with my soul, we remember that you are in charge of this world, Lord God. The enemy has free reign to some degree, Lord God. He can impale us. He can, he can make us uncomfortable. But you reign, Lord God, over all of your creation. You hung the stars in place and you called them all by name. And you know every hair on our heads is counted, Lord God. You know us that closely and that completely. It is well, Lord. It is well with my soul. Whatever confounds us, whatever confronts us, whatever happens in this world that is a, uh, an, a, an abolition of, of goodness and righteousness, it is well because you, Lord, are noticing and working a perfect plan on our behalf. Be glorified in all that we say and do. We ask in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you, sweetheart. We don't always get wonderful singers here to help out. They play. They have one more? first reading for today is from Genesis 2, 18 through 24. We don't, we don't go to Genesis very often, and uh, it's good to go there today. <clears throat> the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. God didn't want for us to be on our own. He couldn't, couldn't populate the world without having a, a boy and a girl, um, fully boy, fully girl. And uh, notice what he did. He created the animals first, and he paired them up, of course, and the male and female. Um, he paired them up, and the man, you know, was noticing all that. Hmm. Well, look at that. Two rhinosaurs, uh, rhinoceroses, uh, two elephants, two pigs, two of everything but me. Hmm. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them, 
And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. Put a, put a thumb right there. You know, you could have just made up one of those things like, like Vicky makes up, you know, so you can fill in, yeah, I, I like this, or I like that, and let the angels name them. You know, the angels are hard working, right? They live right there up there with Jesus. So you could have just said, you guys name them here, and brought the you know, pigs up to them and let them. But no, you had Adam address each animal and give it a name. He gave us dominion over the earth, us, you and me, dominion. We can hunt. We can eat what we hunt. No one can say we can't. We have dominion. There are governments that make rules, but we have dominion over the earth. And so he named all of these animals, and I think in so, in so doing, I think it, it created a desire of the heart for a mate. He wanted a girlfriend. No, a wife. The man gave names to all the cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal in the field, but for the man there was not found a helper as his partner, and I think it made him all the more lonely for one. So the Lord God caused a, a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept, and then he took one of his ribs and he closed it up in its place with flesh, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man, and the man said, this is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She's just like me, in a way. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. In a way that I don't have to be able to explain any better than that. It's just how it goes. We become as one. Two very different people, but as one. Amen? Amen. I thought so. That's kind of a quiet amen. amen. Amen? I thought so. He determines the number of stars. He gives them all names. Creation is orderly. It's methodical. Notice if you read from the start, it's very methodical. Names all the stuff, sky and this and that. It's empowering. God could have let the angels uh, name all the creatures and, and do all of that. No, it's for us. And it's perfect. Jesus was there for the sculpting of Eve. Ladies, remember that. Whenever you have the slightest doubt about your importance or your value, Jesus was there when you were fashioned. He was there when you were molded into a person from Adam to you. That's a very important thing to understand. Most of us don't picture Jesus there. We picture God speaking and up in the clouds or something. No, Jesus was there. Jesus who always was, who is, and who will always be. He was there to say, look what we've made this perfect, wonderful, wonderful woman. Take that with you everywhere you go. We do well to remember the love that went into God's perfect work, creating our partner, our ladies. Amen, men? Good. That was kind of quiet, men. Amen, men? Oh, boy, we're in trouble today. The responsive reading for today from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their course, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine with glory and honor, or you crowned them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. Amen. You have put all things under their feet. Amen. All the flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, 
and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Amen. 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 Oh, yes. This wonderful reading from Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors, Paul tells the people of Hebrews, the Hebrews, of, in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, Jesus, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He was there with the Father. Jesus is the reflection of God's glory, an exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. No one can separate Jesus from God. It's three personalities, three personalities, all of the same issue, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. Not just the word of the Bible, but his spoken word. When he has made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. That, that word, purification, every day I, I do dishes, I purify those dishes. Man, I make sure they're clean. This, hmm? Forks, knives, spoons, I purify them, don't we? You clean the counter, you pay extra for the wipes that have antiseptic, you purify it. Think about that. That's a word that we, air purifiers, oh yeah, we've got a couple of those in the house. You purify stuff. God purified us. <laughs> oh, I mean, sin, he purified us. You take that home with you. God purified us. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor subjecting all things under God or Jesus' feet. Now in subjecting all things to him, God left nothing outside their control. They use the their word, but it is Jesus they're talking about. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings at the cross. For the one who sanctifies is, and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Jesus has called us friend and brothers and sisters saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. Jesus commands all things. We're going to read the gospel. You can stand for that. <clears throat> Some Pharisees, they're up to it again. They came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Now Moses had said, that had made provision for men to, to divorce. Is, Moses allowed a man to write, uh, uh, Jesus answered them, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you, <laughs> not because it's something that he loves or approves of, but because you were so hard-hearted he could, he could kill you or he could let you go ahead and do that. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. 
So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter because it was in there, you know, it was in their history. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Let me tell you what that means. If I just decide, well, you know, Amy's kind of sickly and, you know, it's all these girls at work and, and I decide to put her, just, you know, put her out because I want somebody else, I'm committing adultery. Okay? Woman, do the same thing. If you do the same thing, I'm tired of my husband. Not because he's beat me up or because he's evil or, no, I'm just tired of him. If we move Move along, go our way. We, we take that, carry that sin with us. God deals with sin, and God can forgive. But that's what this means. It doesn't mean that it, God, God showed me to my wife-to-be, and her husband had put her out. He had divorced her. So you get the idea? It wasn't what she asked for. It was what he did. So I'm married to a divorcee. God still hasn't shown me that that was the wrong thing. He showed me it was the right thing to do. So... Just so you know that. People were bringing their little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. You know, they're running interference for him. Hey, you kids, get over here, get over there. Go over, play in the corner. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. He's saying, Wrecker, come here, man. Yeah, yeah, I love you, man. You're important. You can be right by me. Yeah, I'm not just here for adults that can you know, think like me. No, I'm here for the kids too, all of you. He was indignant. That's the first time I've seen that word in scripture. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and he said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs, these innocent people. And that's another word for you too. If you didn't get your babies baptized, you know, they're not going to hell, all right? And I know this, that maybe isn't the Lutheran thinking, but sorry, it's the truth. They're not going to hell. They're innocent until they get to an age where they can choose and choose poorly. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms and laid hands upon them and blessed them. Now, we bring them to the blessing and when we baptize babies, we are claiming the promises of God for that child. We are claiming the promises of God and committing ourselves to that child as an adult in their community where they are welcome in our care. Now, hate me for that if you like, but that's the way I see it. Thank you, Lord, for understanding and for grace in these matters and for this wonderful, wonderful group of people that love you back. Be glorified in all that we say and do, we ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. You know, before you sit down, um, go ahead and just find somebody that you don't like or you don't know and say hello to them. Yeah. <laughs> That'll really make you wonder, won't it? Still visiting. <laughs> Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within.
renew a right spirit within me. extra for camera person yeah but it's worth it we have some people in our country that are suffering horribly um, loss of life is bad enough but loss of everything and depending upon the goodness and the kindness and the generosity of complete strangers. Um, that's what much of, our, much of our country is going through right now. You know, you've got televisions and internet, so you know what's going on. These people are suffering horribly. Um, and I wanna, I wanna pray the Lord's Prayer in pieces for them and discuss as we go what that means. Um, my, my guys are, are creating heart blankets and I, I have a, I, I purchased an actual professional tag on it to put on it to, that we sew on it that says, not forgotten, never alone. And we put that on, the, we, we managed to get several of them to, to Georgia um, a couple weeks back for the, for the families there and the, the young people there who lost loved ones in that school shooting. And the Sheriff's Department said, we'll take more. Um, they're distributing them, just giving them out to people that they encounter that are suffering. And I'm gonna, we just got a, a great donation today. You wanna lift that up? Lift that bag up and show it? Yeah. Got a really nice donation of yarn from the, Rogers Church. from Rogers Church, the, w the women, and uh, they delivered a carload. Literally, only two people could fit in this car, and they had to squeeze in. They delivered a carload of yarn last week to the prison. That's going to be used for just that. We're going to make heart pillows out of it to be given to people in that area of the um, where. They've lost so much, lost homes, lost loved ones, um, all of that. And uh, so um, Senator, State Senator Herbally helped me out uh, years ago with uh, when my guys came up with a flag blanket, huge American flag blanket, and it had the, the Twin Towers uh, with uh, the Statue of Liberty over, looking over those towers. and. Uh, he navigated that so that the, it went to the governor of our state at the time, Hoven, who took it to the sitting president, President Bush, as a gift to them. And uh, I'm gonna count on him to figure out a road to, uh, to get these pillows to people on uh, hands and feet there that can give them a pillow. They're getting food, not enough yet, but I can't do anything about that. But my guys and, and uh, some others can, can make heart pillows so that they know you're not forgotten. It's one of the greatest things, one of the biggest things when we have a loss, when we think we're the only ones suffering. It, I had a guy in, in, when I was doing an internship in grief recovery, and he couldn't get over the loss of his father. He was an adult man, but he said, if I get over him, who will remember? He felt like this, his pain that he was welcoming and enduring was a gift to his father. And he needed to know that he, he would not remember alone. And uh, so that's the message of these pillows. You are not alone. Others know and we care. So um, the story that touched my heart, I think I spoke about it last week, was this little boy. Um, Micah, Micah, who 
he and his mother and his grandmother and grandfather, they all uh, had to go up to the roof of the house because the, um, the water had risen up to the top of the house. They went up to the roof of the house and then the, the storm was such that the, the roof caved in and they all ended up in the water. And his mother had a hold of him until they were swept away and downstream and uh, the, the little kid said, Jesus, save me, as his mother lost grasp of him. And she got a hold of some, some foliage, some tree limbs, and the Lord spoke to her heart and just said, quit fighting the, quit fighting the, the current. Just hang on for a minute and then let go. And when she let go, she was taken downstream where some people rescued her and they found her little boy about a quarter mile down further than that. Um, so she, she, he's her little hero. But that's just one little story about the losses that are being endured there. So we're going to do what, what, what little bit North Dakotans can do uh, to let people know that they're not forgotten. Their story resonates with us and and we have them in our hearts. So today I want to pray the, the, the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. We'll pray it ourselves for them right now, and then we'll just pull it apart a little bit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who is in heaven, above all things, creator of all things, Hallowed means holy, sanctified. God's name is holy as God is the epitome of sanctity. There is no one holy like the Lord, Samuel 2.2. 2. Praying this way means to honor and to revere God's same name as holy. It is a declaration of God's sanctity and a commitment to uphold his holiness in our lives. And it says, you are my God in the loudest way possible. We as Christians understand that the Almighty Father is to be revered and praised above all else. In this petition, we pray that the, the entire world will recognize the holy name of God as the one true God of all, the creator and ruler of the universe. Lord God, sovereign God, be with these people. Thy kingdom come. This petition is twofold. First, we pray for the kingdom of God to take form in here and now for the people who are so lost and, and wondering where help will come from, Lord, so that we can live in a world characterized by faith, hope, and love. It is an expression of our desire for God's reign and rule to be fully realized on earth, even in tragedies. It is a call for God's justice, peace, and love to prevail in the world, for God's presence in the storm-torn America. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We're going to sin every hour, every couple of hours, every few hours. But if we, if we recognize that and realize, ah, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I want. That's not what God wants. And we're living for him. God throws that in the sea of forgetfulness, a deep, deep sea where he doesn't think about it anymore. And we can forget it too. This section of the Lord's Prayer may be the toughest to pray and follow. However, this request contains much wisdom. While anyone can ask to receive forgiveness, reflecting on the way we forgive others can lead us to patience and grace that can be transformative. It reminds me to pray for somebody that I'm frustrated with. That's what it reminds me to. And lead us not into temptation. It's all around us. The, the enemy does know this about us. He knows our weakness. He knows our past uh, forbearances or for uh, mistakes and and he'll tempt us with those again. Temptation can cause us to sin and lead us away from God in ways that can be cumulative. God doesn't lead us to sin. We do that all on our own because of the free will our creator gave us. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us to those things, I would say. Lead us to those things, Lord, that, that reflect your love and your peace and your power so that we don't desire any of the other crap that, that we have to choose from. 
Deliver us from evil, Lord God. And you deliver us every moment of every day, every second of our lives. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, Lord God. And we pray right now for those people that are suffering in their, in their moment of doubt, their moment of, of most or greatest grief. Touch our hearts. Just touch our hearts if we're driving to work, if we're doing somebody's hair, whatever we're doing. Touch our hearts to pray. Pray for somebody over, over there in that, in that matter. We don't know their name. But we don't have to. We can just say, Lord, you're putting somebody on my heart, and I don't know them, but I don't have to. You know them. You know them perfectly, Lord. Give them, the, give them exactly what they need in this very moment. You know what? There's a chance God will show you exactly what they need that moment so that you can even pray that, and the force, the full force of God's power will come to prevail for them and knock away the darkness that brings doubt. Well, I thank you, Lord God, for the ability to pray and be heard for people who have so little and need so much. There are brothers and sisters, whether they know you or not, but they'll know you if we pray for them, Lord God, because they'll meet you face to face. And we thank you for these things, precious Jesus. Would you please pray? Lord, we lift up the folks affected by the flooding and the, uh, the hurricane winds and all that destruction that happened. Um, and even us, well, especially us here, who may have had uh, structural damage from the strong winds yesterday and, and just any, you know, there's so much devastation in the world. Just mm. I, I ask for you that you be seen as you move among us mm -hmm. in our world, that, that, that people recognize your presence here yes. doing the things that you do to bring us closer to you. So I thank you th for that, and, and I ask that you continue to put on our hearts anybody that, that you want us to help. Yes. Uh, help us to know what they need. Help us to to have the abilities to to help them in the ways you want us to help. Mm. And I just thank you that you you do lay things on our hearts because it it's so good for us to help others. It's it's probably the best thing for people who are depressed that might need to know how good they are. It's just it's a wonderful gift that you've given us to help us feel good about ourselves yes. so i thank you and i praise you and i give you all the glory lord and i ask a little special prayer for miss amy that she mm. gets some relief from her pain and yes. that she is strengthened and 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 can come be with us again soon yes lord amen amen thank you dear on his last day of earthly ministry well on his last day before the cross, Jesus gathered the, the followers, the disciples, and uh, the 12 or the 11, as it turned out to be. And they, they passed the bread. He broke the bread. And he said, this is my body broken for you. And they passed that. And uh, each had some. And then he blessed the goblet of wine. They, they sang a hymn. And he blessed the goblet of wine. And he said, this is my blood shed for you, the blood of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. And we take communion today with just that in mind, in remembrance of, of that the cross that he walked boldly to, to give his life up to purify us so that we could be here today to bring hope to a hurting world. Please join us. It's, everybody is welcome for it.
Well, all that's left is that there's some, some of these over where the pericopes are in the front. Um, I don't know what it means, but it's a list of some things. Butter, pumpkin bars for dessert, help serve food. Oh, it's for the fall supper coming up the 27th of this month. Uh -huh. Holy Hannah. Uh -huh. uh, help cleaning tables, prepping food, lemon, making lemonade or coffee, blah, 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 blah. So um, grab one and, uh, and look it over. Are there any questions regarding that? Not today, but there will be. We got some roofing, roofing tiles that are that are uh, going by the wind, and uh, so we will be having someone come and put some back on. Um, but we'll tell you more about that. I'm working with with uh, Zach to uh, to get that done, and we'll keep you posted. I made a phone call that will that might. It's a guy, local guy, that uh, could do it for us. But anyway, we'll know more about that this week. We're not going to wait until the weather gets worse and then it can't get fixed. But um, we'll get that done. All right. Well, I know there's some apple pie downstairs. Not apple pie, the kind you drink. Uh, but uh, I, I had to learn the hard way about that. But uh, <laughs> we're going to take up our collection here. Thanks once again for your promise that you return ten and a hundredfold, overflowing and packed down to those who give with a cheerful heart. I thank you for that, Lord. It's true. We know it. You know it. And I thank you for that, Lord. Bless those here who uh, have made it out for today and, and uh, bring us more whenever you can, Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll get out and make some more coffee and we'll have some of that. <laughs>